All right, so I finally figured out how to get the Korg Chaos Pad, the KP3, the original one, working as a MIDI controller. First of all, I just want to say thanks for watching these videos. It's crazy to me there's still so much interest in this unit after, you know, it's over 10 years old now. And uh, I think I'm still discovering things that it can do. And it's so awesome that there's a community of people out there that are really into this thing. So... If you don't mind, take a second, subscribe to the channel. I love making this uh, KP3 content. I love making other content as well, so check that out if you are interested. Anyway, so I finally got this thing working after many hours of trial and error. So the key was actually I stopped trying to hook it up through USB, and I actually ended up going directly using MIDI cables, these eight pin MIDI cables. You can see them back here, these little silver things. And these are running actually into the back of my interface. So the way I got this to work was I'm just using straight MIDI and you have to have an interface that has MIDI on it in order for it to work this way. You may have better luck with USB. I can never get it to work. So Let's boot up the KP3 editor. I wish you could scale this thing, but you you cannot scale the KP3 editor at all. It's pretty annoying. Um, but anyway, we're going to go into external global control here. And you can see you have a whole bunch of different things. And I'll explain all this in a little bit. Um, but we're going to go into global. I'll show you that this is working by updating the text really quickly here. So... Right now, you can see the idle text is saying, let's go, MIDI. And we're going to update it to uh, Chaos Pad here. So we have the pad LED setting is chain. We're going to set it to character. So it actually displays the character. It says Chaos Pad. And then we are going to go to transmit and we're going to get an error message it's actually not an error message it's a warning message that says this operation will override the global data on the kp3 continue yes and now we get an actual error message and it says the korg usb midi driver is not installed so certain functions may not work correctly we recommend that you install the Korg usb midi driver i have done this probably 25 times i still get this error message it doesn't matter what i do but we're going to hit OK. You see the little thing happening up there? Now watch as we go to our idle text. It is updated to Chaos Pad. So it's actually working. It's working over MIDI. The I don't even know how I have this set up. Let's go into preferences and see. Yeah, so you can see the MIDI in and MIDI out are through my interface. And honestly, I, I think this is probably the easiest way to do this. And it works really well. And I'm going to now show you how to use your favorite plugins with the KB3 as a MIDI controller. All right, so we're in Studio One and I'm gonna show you how to add the KP3 as a device. I'm, it's actually in there right now, but I'm gonna remove it just so we can go through the whole process here. So if we go into options, we're going to go to external devices up here. We're going to go add, and then we're going to name the control service KP, KP3. And we know that we're using it through the actual 8-pin MIDI cables going into the interface. So we're going to select our interface as the receive from and our interface as the send to, and then we're going to hit OK. So now it is added as a MIDI device in Studio One. This, the process for this is relatively similar in like Ableton and other DAWs. So I've got a track here, just a simple drum beat. And I am going to add a beat delay, a stock plugin from Studio One. And I'm gonna show you how we can kind of use the KP3 in a similar way that we use the onboard or native effects in the KP3, but control a plugin in a similar fashion using the touchpad.
the plugin is up here and you can see that KB3 is uh, selected as the focus device. If we hit this gear icon, and then we go to parameter, we're gonna use recently touched. So basically when we assign things to the controller, whatever was recently touched is going to be the default parameter that will then be assigned in the control surface, the KB3. So we'll select KB3 as the control. And as you see here, an, a little external devices uh, window pops up here. I'm just gonna touch the chaos pad here and you can kind of see what happens. Well, first we should hit MIDI learn because when you hit MIDI learn, it's gonna just look for your input on the device. So you can see three things popped up. One, these two knobs and then this one over here. And this one over here is basically when you tap on the KP3, it acts as a toggle. And what's cool in Studio One is that you can actually change these two buttons. So they'll show up as buttons. But you can see I've got Control One and Control Two. Control One is the Y axis, Control Two is the X axis. And now we're gonna assign parameters in this plugin to these controls. So if we touch feedback, which is basically the intensity of the delay. And then we hit this, which is assign. Whatever we touch in here, whatever we touch on the KP3 now is gonna become control parameter for that. So if I go up and down like this, and then I hit assign, you can see that the feedback is now linked to the Y axis on the KP3. So now we can assign any other parameter in here to the X axis. Uh, let's see what it's like when we do the high cut, okay? So, so we'll hit the high cut. We're gonna move across here and then we're gonna hit assign and now the high cut is assigned so now we're controlling these two things on the touchpad and let's just hear what that sounds like. What if we did something a little bit more intense? So let's unassign this from the high cut and let's do beats. So this is actually going to be, uh, if you think of a delay plugin or a delay on the KP3, as you move across here, it's how quickly the delay is. This is actually the opposite. So this is super fast delay and this is super long delay and then feedback is still on the Y and X axis. So let's see what that sounds like. Even just using these two parameters, this makes automation so much easier. So if you're writing automation lanes for, you know, any of these things, if you want to get some really crazy, you know, um, effects going on, but you don't want to just sit there and basically draw these automations and you want to get a little bit more creative and control with a touchpad, the KB3 is super awesome for that. Um, Another thing that's really cool is that there are certain things that also show up when you just start moving around. So I'm on the, um, uh, uh, the fader here, um, on the FX release on the KP3. Um, you can see my KP3 is old, um, because it kind of gets wonked out. Um, and you can turn that into a fader here. So, you know, we could control the mix with the fader. So you can see the mix now is assigned. So you could get, you know, two handed with it and start controlling three things in the plugin with the KP3, which is really cool. Uh, there are other, some other parameters that you can control. So here's a, 
here's the effects depth knob and uh, you know we could assign that to let's say we want to assign it to width so now we've got you know four different parameters that we're controlling with the kp3 so this is the basic functionality that you get if you're just plugging this thing in and uh, using MIDI Learn in any DAW, these are the parameters that you'll get and you can, you know, tweak and assign things to. What's really nice about Studio One and probably in other DAWs is that once these things are written, you can then go into any plugin and uh, click this the same drop down or whatever and all these things will show up again and then you all you got to do is basically just reassign them if i come if i close out of this beat delay and then open it back up again and the the kp3 is assigned as the midi controller all these things are going to hold so i don't go have i don't have to go back and reassign these things so you could find a favorite plugin and assign you know x y axis all the buttons and then go into a new session and then you have this control uh from the kp3 on that plugin all the time you don't have to go and redo this again which is which is really nice um and then you can assign different roles for x y axis in different plugins and that'll hold across two all right so that is the plug and play version of what you can do with the chaos pad but there's a lot more so if we go back into the kp3 editor you can see if we click on this external control tab you've got all these different patterns in this drop down and this is basically just configurations that you can use as a MIDI controller once you enter into external control and I'll show you what that looks like if we go let's just say we use this pattern four, and the way to get this to work is a little bit tricky because you have to hit transmit you get this error message another error message so you transmitted that. And now if we go into shift external control, we're now going to be using the KP3 as a controller as defined in this layout here. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if we um, remove all here and then we just start touching things, you see how so many more controls show up that's because now you can see in the uh, on the kp3 itself you've got kind of faders here and we can actually turn all these into faders so you get a better visual of what that is so you can imagine you could actually mix you know from the kp3 it would probably be super cumbersome but you could do it so now we've got a blake template and we start punching these things these are and we expand this you can see that we've got all these buttons on the top row across and we can change all these to buttons it would be nice if the kp3 the leds would actually light up off and on um, but then we have all these again and you can see those all change and you could change all these to faders so now instead of just the plug and play control which didn't allow you access to these buttons up here you have those buttons so the reason why these are not showing up is because these are actually assigned to notes as you can see here but if we wanted to change that we could go in here and change this to a CC value. And then we could just look at what CC values aren't being used here and just assign them here. You can actually just transmit there on the fly. So when assigning these buttons, they're going to, they're going to default to 
control change and the off and on value. So actually you want your off value to be zero and then you want this to be a toggle. So off is completely off and on value is a hundred because if you look here, when we're back in external control, they're only going 64 to 100. So if we go in and change that to zero to 100 and we change it to a toggle, that should turn it into a full toggle. Yeah. There we go. So you can see there is a ton of functionality here, right? You've got a ton of control. And if you set this thing up to work with all your favorite plugins or even work in your DAW, I mean, you could use these as faders. Um, you've got a pretty robust control surface and probably way more functionality than you'll ever need. So there's two different ways to do it. So once we get out of external control, we just have the basic functionality and you can kind of see what that is here. And it holds across, you know, what you have. So this, this is, this is 13 and 12. So if we just, you know, get out of external control, it goes back to the default thing. And then if we go back into external control, it goes into whatever is shown on the map here. Um, and you can see there's a ton of different patterns once you move into a different map. So let's just, we're going to remove all here and then we're going to go in here and we're going to say, say we want to use this as our map. And now as we do MIDI learn, first you have to make sure you're in external control. So you hit shift nine as you do MIDI learn, look at all that stuff just pop up. So you've, you've kind of got a, an equator here and then control on either side of that equator, um, which is just wild. I mean, the, the possibilities are pretty, pretty endless for what you can do. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you watched all, all the way through here, please hit the like button just for the YouTube algorithm. I would appreciate it. And I will see you in the next KP3 or other sort of video sometime soon. Thanks again for watching.